Hey there. Finished week six of quarantine and it's Saturday night, so it's movie night. Programmed another quadruple feature if anyone is interested in watching any of the films. Um, the theme this week is siege movies, or for our purposes, we can call them shelter in place films. A siege movie is a movie about a group of people trapped inside a location with a typically malevolent force outside trying to get in to presumably kill them or something. The first one we're going to watch tonight is Jeremy Saulnier's Green Room. Green Room is a follow-up to his explosive debut, Blue Ruin. It stars the late, great Anton Yelchin, and in an uncharacteristically dark turn, the great Patrick Stewart plays a bad guy, leader of a Nazi group. It also stars Maybe from Arrested Development. It's about a punk band that gets trapped in a venue uh, with a bunch of evil Nazis trying to get in and kill them. That sounds silly, but it's a white-knuckle thriller. It is action-packed. It's relentless. It is fantastic. Movie number two is David Fincher's Panic Room. Oops, that's backwards. Uh, it's all backwards. It doesn't matter. Scripted by David Kep, who is uh, most noted for his adaptation of Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. Panic Room stars Jodie Foster and an itty bitty baby Kristen Stewart, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Jared Leto plays a very frustrating asshole, a role that I assume he excels at, uh, and Dwight Yoakam in a very terrifying turn. Interesting note, Dwight Yoakam was the first celebrity I ever saw when I moved to LA. He was in a Best Buy perusing some uh, some CDs, and I said nothing to him. Uh, he doesn't take his mask off, but he steals the show in a very charismatic and scary performance. Panic Room is an interesting film in David Fincher's filmography. It was after his rise to fame with Seven and Fight Club, but before masterpieces like Zodiac and The Social Network. It's his simplest film uh, with the least amount of characters all set in one location, and it really kind of is a master class in suspense, and it really shows just how good of a filmmaker he is, that he could take so few simple elements and make such a riveting film from it. Movie number three is Dog Soldiers, Neil Marshall's kick-ass werewolf versus soldiers movie. Um, this was his debut, uh, and then he would go on to do the horror masterpiece, The Descent. After The Descent, it looked like Neil Marshall was probably going to be like the next big name in horror. His follow-up film is called Doomsday, about Scotland being isolated from the rest of the world because of a virus. Very influenced by like Mad Max and Escape from New York. And that movie had a budget that was about three times more than his previous two films. And then the movie underperformed. It didn't do very well, didn't get a lot of... Uh, positive reviews. His next movie was kind of similar, so he got put in movie jail, which means they didn't let him make a movie for a while after that. And he but then he went on to direct episodes of Game of Thrones and eventually got released from movie jail in 2019 and made his next film, which was Hellboy, uh, which also was expensive and tanked, so he's probably going back to movie jail for a while. But uh, all that drama aside, Dog Soldiers is a kick-ass movie. I love it, and I feel uh, kind of personally invested in this movie because horror nerds have this weird thing where if they feel like they discover a movie, they try to turn as many people onto it as they can. When I first saw Dog Soldiers, I saw it, a VHS on the video store shelf, um, and uh, me and my brother Nathan were renting videos, and he was like, that one looks stupid, but I was looking at a still on the back cover that had a big practical werewolf, and I thought it was going to be awesome, and it was. Okay, we're about to start, so I'm going to make this last one quick. Um, for our fourth uh, shelter-in-place siege movie, we're taking it back to 1976 for John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Not his first film, but his first proper film. His first film was a student film that just got expanded into a feature uh, called Dark Star, so this was the first kind of breakout movie he had where everyone realized he had some chops as a filmmaker. He composed the score as well. Terrific. Uh, score. Um, his next move is the movie that really put him on the map. Uh, and that was Halloween. And then after that, he could never break out of the horror genre. He was pigeonholed as a horror filmmaker for the rest of his career. He really wanted to make a Western and he never got the chance. In fact, Assault on Precinct 13 is loosely based off of a Western called Rio Bravo, which was one of his favorite films. So um, this is our fourth movie for our shelter in place siege quadruple feature. John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Okay, as I mentioned last week, weeks five and six were the first two uh, videos that I filmed for my quarantine quadruple features. So they were just made from my Instagram stories. Um, they were pretty quick, um, so I'm just going to expand just a little bit, not too much. First, we talked about Green Room held up. Awesome movie, gets better on each viewing, very exciting, really action-packed filmmaking. 
panic room held up as well. I did say Dwight Yoakam never takes his mask off. That's not true. He does for a little bit, but for the most part, he's, he's completely covered. Um, I went at length about my love for dog soldiers and I still like the movie a lot, but, um, boy, there's a monologue in there that, <laughs> that the woman, the only female character in the movie, pretty much she says, and it's just horrible. It's just the worst piece of writing you've ever seen um it was it was pretty cringy watching it this time around um so i was kind of wondering like oh is anyone watching this recommendation thinking that like i i thought that part was great but it i do like the rest of the movie um you know each time i watch it i'm kind of like a little more disappointed with how few of a uh, werewolf shots there are it doesn't show the werewolves very often they're really employing the uh james cameron approach to aliens um to dog soldiers so where you you see quick flashes of the aliens and they're very much dudes in rubber suits um and they just keep reusing the same suits over and over because you never see more than three or four in one shot um but it's still still pretty exciting fun movie um and okay the, the main one i want to talk about assault on precinct 13 i did mention the score uh, a bit but i can't really emphasize how great the score for Assault on Precinct 13 is. It's very simple, it's very rhythmic, but this was just kind of a preview of how influential of, not only of a horror filmmaker John Carpenter would eventually become, but a film composer as well. He's composed almost all of his scores, and that's a really incredible thing for, for a filmmaker to be so musically savvy as well, to understand so well how the music is going to affect the viewer, and, and to just do it himself. Like, he composed the classic score for Halloween, um, which is, uh, you know, probably one of the most famous scores of all time um but assault on precinct 13 score is great as well and that was just kind of a, a a preview of how great he would become assault on precinct 13 is a very stripped down film it, there's there's a there's very few elements to it but it's so stylistic um and so kind of visually compelling he has such a straightforward approach to filmmaking but he just does it so well and i think assault on precinct 13 is uh just a really a standout debut from a filmmaker who had gone to be one of my top three favorite filmmakers of all time. I'm sure we're going to talk much more at length about, about John Carpenter as we go. But the first time I saw Assault on Precinct 13, I was in elementary school, and it really blew me away. There's a scene I'm not, I'm not going to give too much information about, but it takes place at an ice cream truck, and it involves... Um, uh, you know, an ice cream truck driver and, and a little girl getting some ice cream. And the first time I saw the movie my jaw dropped. There's something so shocking that happens. I mean, it's simple and by today's standards, um, maybe not even that, maybe not even that shocking. Um, but I hadn't really seen something like that in a movie before and it really stuck with me. So the movie's very simple, um, but incredibly effective and really entertaining. And the main character is kind of the, um, the, the, the archetype for the type of John uh, Carpenter hero that we would see in a, a lot of his future films roles played by um, Kurt Russell and like James Woods in Vampires but mainly Kurt Russell is the type of character that you see the, the prisoner guy in Assault on Precinct 13 um, that type of character is one that obviously John Carpenter came, became very interested in um but uh yeah the movie's the, really great it held up uh it was probably my favorite of the night although Green Room is, is fantastic as well but uh really good night of really good night of movies hope you enjoy <laughs>